Hello, my friends. I'm excited to share this conversation with you. I recently had the chance to sit down and interview my friend Anthony at 3D Prints. Anthony uses 3D printers, laser cutters, and CNC router to make a bunch of different products and sell them on a bunch of different platforms. I get to ask him questions like, how did he start? What was the first product that he made? How does he market? Where does he sell? Um, as well as some personal questions, fears, struggles along the way, and we just talk shop throughout the video. So. Uh, I think Anthony is crushing it. He's per currently doing this part-time and hopefully he'll be transitioning to full-time um, in the next six months or so. I honestly think that he has a lot more to offer you than I do in terms of just running a business um, and all that good stuff. So I hope this video is an encouragement to you. That's the whole reason why we decided to record the conversation in the first place. I hope, I hope that you find it's relatable and you get a lot out of it. So there are chapter breaks, so feel free to jump around to whatever section interests you most. If you want to find more out about Anthony, I'll put links to his uh, store and all that good stuff in the description below. And without further ado, here's that conversation. Well, hey, Anthony. <laughs> How you doing? Doing good. How are you? Sweet. Yeah, good. Uh, thanks for taking time to jump on a call and talk shop. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, do you have a lot of, lot of orders that you got to get done today? Yeah, um, actually, so my my Glowforge Pro has been down, and I finally got it to work yesterday. But um, yeah, I've been just behind crazy amounts. So hopefully today I'll be caught up. Okay. So good. Well, thanks yeah. for taking time to jump on a call. Yeah. Um, anytime. Yeah. So we are recording this, and we're just gonna uh, you know throw it on YouTube after we're done, and hopefully it's an encouragement to other people who are on. Yeah. A similar journey or uh starting or thinking about starting a similar journey um yeah are you cool if, cool if we just jump in yeah let's do it cool well i think a lot of people that are watching this video probably know about me and a little bit of my journey mm -hmm. and background how about you kind of introduce yourself and kind of what you got going on yeah um well my name is anthony and i started my company 3d prints llc i think officially like two or three years ago um but yeah before that it was just kind of like me doing random stuff for people um i had a buddy and i kind of talked about this on one of my videos um how i got started but one of my family friends was like hey can you like 3d print this part it was like a i don't know like a muffler housing for air compressors and they're like nobody else in the world makes this hmm. so like if you could make this we could make a ton of money so i did he ordered like 25 and then i just had my little ender 3 plugging away and i was like i need another printer like this could be big okay. so you know 10 printers later it's kind of where we're at today so yeah awesome and then so um so you what i think is cool about your journey is a lot of times when you see someone on youtube Maybe they're already full time and maybe they're crushing it, making mm -hmm. tons of money. Um, what I think, one thing I think about, one thing I think is cool about your journey is you're, you're part time. You haven't gone to full time yet. Hopefully by yeah. the end of the year. So you you were working yeah. full time at your day job and you just switched to part time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, my job and they were always like. This is full time, but it, it was more like you need to work at least like 45 hours a week um, to like 65. Uh, that's just kind of like the the kind of environment that we were in. And I realized early in like the pandemic that like I value time more than money. <laughs> um, so I was like, OK, I'm not going to do like the 50 hour thing anymore. I'm going to work 40 hours and I, I, it was kind of a really awkward conversation with my boss. I was like, I need to be at home a day a week so I could do my own thing. And he, they were really respectful. And I think that he is very like-minded too, in the sense that, you know, he started when he was like 30. So I went mm -hmm. from every day working, I guess every, every work day to just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, 10 hour days. And that caught up to me really quick. Yeah. And I was like falling asleep on the way home. So I was like, you guys, can I just like work 30 hours? And they're like, yeah, 10 hour days, that's fine. So now, um, yeah, I'm home part time. And then I work part time. So I'm playing the, the safe game. But it's, sure. it's kind of like I said, I'm just, it's hard to keep up. It's hard to come out with new ideas. So yeah, yeah part time. 
How how many listings of products do you get? Just kind of a rough. Oh geez, um, you know I thought about this the other day because Etsy charges you twenty cents per listing every month, I believe, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my gosh, this starts to add up pretty quick. So I think I have between Etsy and eBay right now, I have like a hundred maybe of just different products, wow. different variations. That's a lot of listings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I've got well, I think I have like five or six, but we've talked before, and I I basically got like three kind of main products, but I can't imagine, yeah. like, can't imagine juggling six or a hundred different products listing. Yeah. So, um, where do, where all do you sell? Do you sell primarily on Etsy and then, or yeah, what's that look like? Yeah. For you? Um, so I started out on eBay just exclusively because, um, it was just easier, like their platform was really easy. But now that I've gotten on Etsy, um, I think at the end of last year, I started selling on Etsy and that just kind of took off because of the product, I think. And then um, just a couple months ago, I started on Amazon, uh, which their seller platform is really great too, because it's like, as a consumer, I'm like, I'm buying it on Amazon, I'm sorry. Like right. I everything I get is on Amazon. And I, I looked at the year end statement and I'm like, oh, I better not tell my wife, but you know, I just spend so much, but in, and it is, and it's just so convenient. Cause it's like, it's here the next day or the, like two days later. So I'm like, I got to get a piece of this pie. So, but I found that uh, some of my products are more like older people, like buying them. Um, Cause it's a really niche product, mm -hmm. like like the model train stuff. And it's like people like that are set in their way of like eBay. So it's like things like that I sell, um, like Etsy is like a really good outlet for other products. So it's just kind of like, I sell this over here really good. I sell this over here really good. And then this does hmm. really well over here. But most of my listings are just across the board anyway, so. Okay. And then I'll probably just splice up some pictures of some of your products yeah, sure. that you have in, cool. in post. Um, but what are, what are some of the products that you sell? Um, so lately, um, a lot of people are buying just acrylic letters and I really, uh, I don't know. I just love it because people will be like, Hey, I need this letter. I'm going to make a keychain." So it's just kind of cool to see everybody's story, like, and be like, well, yeah, this letter would be really good, but what do you think about doing this? And then they're like, that's such a good idea. Okay. Thank you for like... So, um, yeah, acrylic letters, acrylic shapes, really basic things are kind of like, uh, like a bread and butter. And then lately I've been doing like a lot of diorama kits because that's, that's just kind of a fun thing that I like. I'm not really a collector or anything, but, uh, yeah, I do that. And then, um, most of my resin printers are running, uh, like, uh, scale model accessories, like little, I don't know, like little toilets and stuff. So, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is really cool. I think one of my favorite um, listings of yours, just because I like Star Wars, is just that kind of background Star Wars background scene. Yeah, that's really sweet. Yeah, those are cool. <laughs> um, so what was so so was that muffler housing? Was that the first product that you had ever made, or what was the first thing that? Got you yeah, started? well, and I was thinking back of and and I don't know how much time we have, but it's like I. <clears throat> I originally saw this video of a 3D printed crescent wrench and I was like, I need a 3D printer. Mm. So I, when I got one, I made that and I was like, this is so cool. But at the time, not a lot of people were selling things um, online like that were 3D printed. So yeah, it was just like little knickknacks here and there. Like I printed a spoon. I don't know why somebody paid for a 3D printed spoon. Okay. Like it's not really something you want to eat off of. But yeah, that was kind of like the major, the muffler housing was like the, this is the get up and go for me. Um, okay. And that was like the first actual product that, that kind of carried it along. Okay. And then you just kind of started branching out different stuff from there. Yeah. Yeah. And um that was like I said before, that was a uh, kind of a discontinued, they don't make that anymore. And then I was like, well, what else on that machine don't they make anymore? So mm -hmm. there was like this like squirrel cage, like, I don't even know what it's called. I don't know. But uh, I, I bought one on Amazon or on eBay that I found and I took my calipers and I made that and I actually sell the model file for that on my other Etsy store. And a lot of people have been buying that and printing it themselves because mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, they don't they don't make that anymore. So it's really nice for people to have access to stuff like that. So okay. yeah, it's just like, 
I don't know if it's a curse, but it's like I go through Home Depot and I'm like, I can make that. And I like look it up and I'm like, I can't profit off of that. I'm not, I'm not going down that road. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> that, yeah. That happens a lot. It's one thing yeah. that's kind of challenging that I'll see, you know, I have a, a, an adapter that I, that I print and it's very unique. You can't find it off Home Depot, but if you were <laughs> to buy a similar adapter in Home Depot, it'd be like five bucks. And yeah. I'm like, there's no way I could sell mine for five bucks and print it because, I don't know, I guess if people understand 3D printing, maybe they'll understand a little higher price, but it's like, I'm not mm -hmm. getting these manufactured in China for five cents a piece. Um, mm -hmm. And then, but anyways. Um, so you're doing this, you're doing this full time, you're working, or uh, part time, you're in your basement. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just cranking it out. What kind of what kind of setup you got going on? What kind of machines and equipment you got? Yeah, uh, so I have two Glowforge printers that are just running pretty much all the time when I'm home. Um, and then I have, I kind of have been sticking to like the Creality machines for 3D printers, just because like most of the parts are interchangeable. Um, so I have eight FDM machines. Um, two and then two more that I just kind of have for parts right now okay. and then I have six uh, resin printers so and those are those are running just non-stop all the time because I'm mm. trying to push things to Amazon and I need some stock okay um, and then out in the garage we have the Shapeoko Pro CNC router so that's kind of like one of those projects that I just want to dive into, but again, I don't have a whole lot of time. So it's like, I just route what I need to for parts um, as they sell. So I don't have any like stock or anything. Sure. But, okay. Yep. And then um, as far as uh, kind of your money coming in, d does most of your money come from Etsy or is it like 50-50 split between Etsy um, and eBay or kind of how's that work? Yeah, so that's kind of interesting too because on Etsy, most of my orders average from like, t like 10 to $30. Um, but there's like, I, you know, there's like three or five a day. Um, and that's really consistent. But then like, Etsy is just kind of more high level items. Um, so like last week, I made um, probably about half of what I made on Etsy on eBay. So I'd say lately Etsy's been doubled in sales for as compared to to eBay. Okay. Um, yeah. Huh. If you don't don't feel like you have to share any numbers if you don't want to, but is yeah. this a small business that you have three D printing? Is that providing about half of the income that you and your family need to live off, or kind of where are you at on that? Um. Yeah, and that's kind of something that I didn't think about because, like, early on, I was like making about seven hundred a week in sales, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, like I could do this full time." Mm -hmm. And then I was like, "Oh, I need to pay taxes on all this," and you know, all those things just right. kept coming up. And I'm, "What do you mean I gotta pay? You know, insurance? What is this?" So right. yeah, it it was really surprising um, early on. Uh, that I was like, oh, maybe I can't do this. But then as sales kind of went up and up, I was like, yeah, we could do, we could do this. Um, but yeah, I'd say maybe about 60%, maybe a little bit over half of what, hmm. what, uh, my business brings in. And that's just partially my fault. Cause I like to buy toys too. So I'm like, sure. You know, most of my business income goes back into the business where I'm like, oh, wow, we got all this money sitting there. Let's get another laser, you know? Right. So, right. And, and, it, and it's kind of a good space for me, too, because I'm not 100% reliant on that income um, mm. that I can make those uh, purchases now. So it's like buy the stuff that you need now before you rely on it. Um, right. That's good. So that's that's been kind of a good thing. But at the same time, it's like, last I, I didn't need a new macbook so you know i was like maybe i should act like i'm reliant on that income but yeah yeah it's so it's so easy to fall into that it's a business expense trap <laughs> yes yes and that was one of the first things you told me and like the very first email you sent you're like those amazon packages that show up are a curse not a blessing and i'm like 
yeah, and now I hate spending money with the business because it's like that could be in my pocket, you know, or in like a savings to like give myself a bonus at the end of the year. But yeah, it's just, it get it gets you. Yeah, I, I learned my, well, I hope I've learned my lesson. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit more diligent saver now and I just really yeah. try just tooth and nail not to buy anything that I don't need. Mm -hmm. Um so it's, it's a work in progress, learn, learning journey. Um, yeah. How is, as far as like, so you, I didn't know that you sold STL files too. I thought you just, just did like it. Just yeah. Um, and that was, that was kind of like, a, I keep, I keep trying to think of like my, my dream day is like, I found out that I'm like really creative in the morning time. So I'll be, okay, what can I create in this? Uh, like just this morning, I made like a little computer station that I'm going to 3D print for, you know, those Star Wars dioramas. But I've already been selling that file for a long time on Cults 3D. Um, hmm. And I'm like, well, why don't I just print that too and offer that at my at my store? People have been buying this file. Um, it's just kind of like a, another avenue of, of inco income okay. because, I, you know, people say like, to become wealthy, you need like seven sources of income. Well, it's like, do I have that? So making STL files and selling them is just been like kind of a backup, like extra money, but not extra, if that makes sense. Just like another avenue of, of another stream of income, but. Sure. That's kind of an interesting topic. Cause it, is it, another stream or it's like are we losing because i've thought about this myself too am i am i losing a sale over here mm -hmm. with an actual made physical product or is it just a completely different audience because i mean people who own 3d printers and are in 3d in the 3d printing industry it's like they're probably not yeah. going to buy my product from me they probably just want the stl to make it themselves right. and save on that modeling time yeah um yeah it's it's interesting. I, I sold, I only sold one product as an STL for a while. And then someone took my file. I, I put it on Thingiverse and then someone mm -hmm. started selling the, the physical model on Etsy. Oh, okay. And it was the exact, they didn't try to change it or anything. It was the exact same thing inside the message. Them. And then after that, I just kind of had a sour taste in my mouth. I'm like, yeah, this is my baby. I spent so much time designing it and now someone's stealing my stuff. What the heck? Um, but it's, yeah. I can make more profit if I sell a physical item, yeah. but then it takes more time versus a STL, maybe I only make five bucks, but then it's pure like passive income, which is really nice too. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of one thing like, um, that muffler housing, I will never sell that STL mm -hmm. just because that's like, that is the money maker for me. So it's like, if I, if I list like a computer station or like a little, like, I don't know, like a cup holder or something. I'm not really like, okay, I'm not going to sell this physical product if I sell this STL. And mainly because I think it's like people are going to like Cults 3D for me and like that's a STL website. Like they're not like going to, to uh, Etsy and seeing my listing for the STL and being like, oh, I, I could sell that, you know? Right. And, uh, but then in my description too, I say like, if you want this 3d printed, go to my other Etsy store. And like, I have that listed there too. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. Cause, um, I've had a lot of people message me and say like, could I get this 3d printed? Like, I don't have a 3d printer and that's, that's really cool. But, um, yeah, but you always take a risk, like giving out your intellectual property. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any kind of uh it's kind of hard to to guess maybe of when you might make that plunge and go full time in your business Ooh. it's kind of a scary yeah. scary jump <laughs> it is yeah and um looking back i've been like in my mind i'm like it's gonna be this day it's gonna be before christmas it's gonna be on my birthday and then like those times pass and i'm like did I miss an opportunity? I, you know, you can always look back and be like, Ooh, I wish I would have started when I first got my 3d printer, but, um, I don't know, man, this year, probably for sure. Just the way things are going. Um, we're just like right, right there chasing it. And I'm like, I'm only doing this two days a week. What could it look like if I was like a hundred percent? 
Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just like, it's, it's scary, but like my father-in-law was like, Hey, you know, like if something has like that, that big of a risk, like think about the reward that could come with that, you know? And it's like, right. uh, but now I have two kids and a wife to take care of. So yeah, it's yeah. just, it's crazy. But like I told you, I can always just go get another dead end job. So whatever. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. It's such a great topic to talk about and there's so many different facets and it obviously depends on everyone's different circumstance and situation yeah. and, and comfort level and risk tolerance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um my journey was a little different i just kind of took the plunge and tried to figure it out and thankfully something worked out but i had to get a little part-time job uh, yeah. delivering packages uh through mm -hmm. amazon for a little bit to keep me afloat while this kind of went full-time but yeah. um yeah how about uh how about a little more personal question, like friends, family, and even like wife, just as far as like kind of comfort level, do they think you're crazy for maybe oh, man. quitting a, you know, a stable, secure yeah. job and doing your own thing? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Um, that was something that's very surprising. And I don't know, maybe like if, if the viewers are watching, like you got to consider this, like you might lose some friends over this hmm. that like kind of kind of think that they're helping you. Um, but yeah, we've had a lot of conversations. Like my father was just like, dude, don't quit your job. Like put in another two years or put every time I talked to him, he would be like, just do this for just hang it, keep your full-time job for another year until I sat down. I was like, this is how much money I'm making. Like, and he's like, Oh, okay. Okay. Well, and then I'm like, you know, I'm not an idiot, okay? <laughs> I have kids and a wife. I've considered literally everything. Like we have our LLC set up, I'm on payroll, they're holding taxes, you know, I have savings. And then, you know, I got other people like my father-in-law that are like, how could I invest? Like, this is mm. a great idea. Mm. You know, I, I need to help out. Like, when can I work for you? You know, That's so it's awesome. like, you have like polar opposites of, of people and then and then you have like, I don't know if you, how your wife is, but like my wife's been really supportive. Um, there's times where sh she gets sick of me talking about business and I'll be like, like, we'll go for walks every day. And I'm like, listen, if I start talking about our, our business, just tell me to shut up. Cause I know like you don't necessarily need to hear about it, but, and I think that's cool. Like, like that you and I have conversations cause it's like, that's an outlet that I can talk about things that I'm excited about right. and but at the same time, you like talk about like your daily job, like it's not really that big of a difference. But yeah, I've definitely had a couple of friends where it's like, I don't really talk to them as much anymore because they kind of gave a little bit too much opinion. And that's something that I struggle with too, is just like, not everybody thinks like I do or like we do. Um, some people are okay with their dead end job and watching Roseanne every night on TV. So I don't know, it's, right. it's just kind of crazy. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never had um, any negative things verbalized to me. I just kind of kind of had this feeling. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, you know, they never said anything, but sometimes I'd kind of have that feeling like, do you know what you're doing? And yeah. Uh, yeah, that was really tough for me. So I had gotten married, I think two years after we got married, I quit my job. And then just floundered for a little bit as I tried to figure it out because I just couldn't stand my job anymore. And uh, I just hated, I hated when people would ask me, like, maybe you go to a party and there's someone new that you meet. They're like, hey, what do you do for work? They're like, hey, how about those Packers or how about the weather? Or just change yeah. the subjects. I'm like, I'm just trying to figure it out. I don't know what I'm doing. And then other people think, you know, it's not wise. And then... Um, like, you know, I want to be a provider for my wife whose dream is to be a full-time, you know, stay-at-home mom. And right yeah. right now, she was working part-time, but now she has to work full-time to try and carry my load because uh, I'm not bringing anything mm -hmm. to the table. And what her, what's her parents think because I'm not bringing anything to the table. And those, like, first three months were probably the most mentally, emotionally spiritually most challenging for me to kind of wrestle with yeah all these things and not making much money but i i think it's it's great um where you're at because you're you're doing it a little smarter than i am you're slowly weaning yourself off 
instead of just jumping ships. So that's, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think too, sometimes I'm like, am I playing this smart or am I just scared? You know, it's like, what, what could that look like? Cause it's like, if, if I'm making, you know, I don't know, 50 grand doing two days a week is, you know, how, what's that going to look like? Yeah. five or six days a week but yeah it's it's it is definitely mentally straining on somebody because like and a lot of people will say like you've created this business this is your baby and like that's part of you now like if the business isn't doing good like the past two weeks for me have been like really slow and it's starting to pick up now which is great but it's just like dude you're in a bad mood and and you got to really turn that off somehow and yeah it's just kind of it's really it's a struggle for for me at least just like what are we gonna do? And and that's where I like panic and I'm like, I need another product. Like like I told you, it was like Father's Day's coming up, I could engrave Zippos. And it's like, well, that's not, okay. I need to just focus on like my own thing. I can't just like, cause people are doing this for pennies. And you know, it's like, that's not really beneficial to a customer just to, to kill another product for somebody else. Sure. Yeah. And there's, I feel like we could talk like six hours. There's so many different directions this could <laughs> yeah. go. One. One quick thought I wanted to say about part time. So it's like, let's just say 50 grand. So it's like you're investing, let's say two, you're working in your business basically two days a week. You probably work weekends yep. too, but okay. So two days yeah, a week, yeah. <laughs> um, two days and some change. So it's like, you're able to create a part time income, income, let's just say 50 grand for only two days a week. It's like, imagine, mm -hmm what you could create if you invested 100% of yourself and all of your time. It's, it's yeah. kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, and that's kind of something that our tax people said when I when I met with them. They're like, you're doing this two days a week. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I print stuff on the weekend, but that's like maybe like 16 hours a week. And they're like, uh, so why are you, why aren't you doing this full time? I'm mm. like, well, cause I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So no, it's been, it's been pretty cool, but, um, yeah. And I don't know if that is how it would actually, you know, multiply because right. right now my, right now my, my 16 hours a week is, is just me catching up. So I don't, what would another day of just design be? And that's kind of my fault, like not scheduling myself, like morning is for design, afternoon is for production. Um, and then like mm -hmm. when I get home or when the kids go to bed, I can, I can run downstairs and start something else. But mm -hmm. yeah, it, it is really interesting to think about. Yeah. Just kind of the human potential and the possibilities and, and whatnot. You mentioned, yeah. you mentioned like Father's Day and like Zippos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for me on, on this journey, there's so many ideas like that. Like I could engrave tumblers or this or that yep. and sell them and have a whole product line and store. But I've personally found that on this journey, I'm not, I'm not really so much money motivated as I am passion motivated. Sure. It's like I could engrave the Tumblr, but I don't really care about Tumblrs. Tumblrs don't yeah. like do it for me. So do you, do you do stuff that just makes money or do you focus more on things like, I'm only going to make it if it's cool and I, I actually like it and I'm passionate about it. Or is it yeah. both? Yeah. Um... I'd say maybe 90, 10. Um, so 10%, I think I'm just like, I need to create a product. This like Valentine's day is coming up. I need to make like a keychain file. People can pay a dollar for And the next Valentine's day comes around, they can buy it again and again and again. Um, and then 90% of the time I'm like, I need to think of something that I'm passionate about because if I'm not, it's just going to die. Like I've come up with ideas like, like this Apple watch band. I bought 180 of these online cause I was like, Oh, I could engrave these and sell them. Cause like other people were doing it. I'm like, it was like 80 cents, I think for the watch band and people are selling them for 15 bucks. I'm like, that's a good profit margin. I sold one because I did, I was just not passionate about it. And okay. it just like, I didn't have good photos. Everybody else was doing it. So it's like, that's kind of something I found out at the beginning of the year is like, if I don't care about this product, it's not going anywhere. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I feel like I'm, I've been in that spot a lot too. And, you know, even right now, I would say like, I've just been making kind of the same 
products for the last three years and I'm kind of like, yeah, I need something to kind of fuel that passion, like something, something new. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's different. This whole entrepreneurial journey, it's, it's really like, uh, kind of a self improvement journey more than anything. And you gotta yeah. be a self starter and you rely on a hundred percent on yourself. And I don't know, trying to find that it's funny because so many people will start small businesses and like, as if that's like owning your own business is the best thing. But then I've seen some other people that have created a small business doing a job, maybe they're not super passionate about and then get burned out. It's like, well, if you don't yeah. have, if the passion's not there, it doesn't matter if it's your business or someone else's business, you're eventually going to get burned out if it's not mm -hmm. filling you in some way. And so, yeah, it's, but it's hard because it's like, we got to put bread on the table and some things we just need to bite the bullet and I just need to do this because it makes money. But then mm -hmm. I also want it to be fulfilling and do something creative and cool and fun. But yeah, we're just trying to figure yeah, it and out. I, I think that's really good because it's like, if you don't have a drive behind your business, it's like, for me, it's my family. And I've shared that a lot on like YouTube and like, even on my Etsy page, it's like, if you're buying something from me because I want to spend time with my kids. Like that's most important. Um, so yeah. And and you kind of mentioned that it's like, you've been doing that part for three years, but it's like, could you imagine like doing that for 30 years at like a factory or something where it's just like, but so it's like, you have your own business. It's like, let's, let's set this aside. Maybe like, let's put this on somebody else's plate. Um, and we can still make money from that. And I, I know like a lot of people, like I tried to do that with my brother. I was just like, listen, I need, I'm going to give you a printer. You're going to run this part at your mm -hmm. house. I'm going to give you 30 cents per part. I need to focus on something else. And that's kind of like the benefit of owning your own business is like, I, can, I think I want to do something else right now. Like I want to, I don't know, I want to laser cut cups or like, or like, uh, you know, pen holders or lamps or something. So you can kind of go that way in a creative space and eventually you'll probably make money on that. But you know, you don't, you're not stuck. You're not stuck at, you know, gr growing somebody else's corn or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing the opportunity to be able to provide a source of income to other people too. Like, like yeah. you said, if there's a product that you're kind of burnt out on, just give it to, you know, a friend or family member and Hey, can you run this yeah. part for me instead? Yep. Yeah. And it's cool. Cause it, it's like, um, I have a buddy. I was like, dude, I, I'm not using this printer right now. Do you want it? And he's like, yeah. And now he like prints something every day. And it's like, eventually I'm going to be like, Hey bud, you want another printer? But you know, you might have to run some parts for me. Right. And he's just all, all about it, you know? And it's like, how big do you want your business to be? You know, for me, it's like you said, it's like, it's not really about chasing money, but it's like, I kind of have this responsibility now if I've created this product, um, people want this. And that's, that's hopefully the, the goal is to help other people. And it's like, if I can provide this for somebody else and then help somebody else mm. have a little side cash, you know, and then you can kind of profit from that. It's kind of a good space. Like it's a win, win, win. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. That is really cool. It was really just a cool experience for me that I've never got to experience before hiring my, my mother-in-law on a full part-time basis. She was, yeah. she was working, uh, at Costco for a part-time and okay. then uh, she didn't like it. And her, you know, body was hurting just from lifting heavy things. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And so I put 10 printers in her, in her basement and then she's been running those. And so she quit Costco and does that full time or part time now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that's, that's really sweet. And it's cool because you have, you can shift and kind of move things around and do things like I, mm -hmm. man, like it's funny. My, my journey from, from Etsy, I started selling on Etsy and then it was like so cool selling all these products and then packaging them. And then like a month yeah. or two into it, I'm like almost like wishing people didn't order. Cause I'm like, I don't want to package a stupid part right now. Yes. Like there's so many other things I would time. rather do. I don't want to tape Dude, up. A I have, <laughs> yes, I, I have certain products and I'll see it. I'll be like, say it like one of your items. So I'm like, I don't want to put one of those together right now. You know, I just don't want to put that together. But yeah, I totally get that. It's, it, but it's nice to hand it off to somebody else. Yeah. And thankfully she loves like packaging. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why? That's yeah. great. Cause I hate it. And, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and I know I told you, it's like, I love walking down to the post office, but then like certain days it's like, maybe we need to take the car because like we have too many, you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. I, I spent all morning packaging these up. I just want to kind of take a break now, but yeah, it's just, it's just fun. Yeah. That's good stuff. I think, uh, yeah, one topic, um, just enjoying, enjoying your business, um, which mm -hmm. we've talked about a little bit through text and video messages and stuff. And, uh, I've been on that journey a lot, just trying to just enjoy, like I could, I could make more money if I packaged the parts myself, but yeah. it's like, do I really want to do that? And it's like, I could make, I could make a little bit more, have a little bit more wiggle room, or I could just kind of just have enough just to get by, but then have that time freedom to spend more yeah. time with, you know, wife and kid and what's most important to us. And I think it's important to really keep that in front of our minds. Like when we start a small business and this video, I think can apply to anyone, whether you're 3d printing or selling cupcakes, if you're just making yeah. a, you have a small business, um, do you, do you enjoy it? Is it like, why are you starting a small business? Well, I want to have more happiness or more time freedom. And then you ask them, it's like, do you have happy and more happiness right now? And oftentimes you're yeah. like, I'm burnt out and this kind of sucks. Yeah. It's like, well, well, it's in something to note there too, is like a lot of people will start their own business because they don't, they don't want to work for somebody, but then you're like, bro, you're working for thousands of people now. Like this isn't, this right. isn't just like, hmm. you know, and I, that was like, oh man, like, I don't like this customer because they're like really pushy and stuff. It's like, dude, you can just fire them. Like you can fire customers. Like that's hmm. okay. But most of the time, if you just dig in and like, really like be overly obnoxiously nice to them, it's like, they'll, they'll be a lifetime customer. And I know you talked about that too. It's just like, you can turn things around and you can take things in directions that you couldn't with a regular job. And I'm like, yeah, you said like, you don't like packaging. And it's like, well, that's my, like my brain shuts off. And then like my creativity turns on. And it's like, that's my time to just think, you know? And it's like, I can't really do that in any other space. So yeah, it's just really interesting. There's so many benefits I feel like, but there's a lot of risks too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wild journey. Here's, here's a question I just thought of, uh, last night as I was thinking about jumping on a call. Yeah. Um, was there anything when you're first starting <clears throat> this small business, was there anything at the beginning that you thought, uh, so how long you've been doing this now? Like two years, year and a half or, um, yeah, I'd say two and a half years. I've been kind of serious about it. And mm -hmm. then before that, I think, I think it's been five years I've been selling that muffler housing. Um, and that was just like, so two years of that. And then I was like, oh, I could do this. I could do other things. So it's been, I'd say maybe like between two and five years. Okay. So was there anything that kind of at the beginning of starting your business that you thought was like really, really important to where now, you know, two to five years in, you're like, that's not really that important if anything comes to mind. Ooh. Ooh, um, I can't, when you ask that, there's kind of like two things that came to mind that aren't really like, kind of, they're kind of the opposite of that, like regrets, like I should have done this. Um, and that's machine maintenance. I'm terrible at it. Mm. Like my machines are so cheap. If they, if, if it's like six hours of repair or something, I'm just getting a new one. Um, and I wish I would like spend more time tuning my machines because you know, the product's going to be better. And then the second thing would be like, to be legit, like get payroll service going, um, because taxes, you know, that was just a big pain, um, for me this past year, because I technically wasn't paying myself. So I had to pay in a bunch of taxes this year. So it's been kind of a pain, but, um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything that I'm like, I was doing that. I don't think it's so important right now. Or just like um, starting a business. I know for me, I, I labored and spent so much stinking time about coming up with like my name and my logo. I'm like, this oh, is yeah. so important. Like my whole business yeah. hinges on the design of my logo. 
And then I'm like, yeah. people don't care about my stupid logo. Do I have a good product or no. service to offer? <laughs> like, I know. I, I, yeah, I've actually changed my logo like three times already. Um, and I, I just, I'm like, that's not important. Like 3D prints, like, what is that? You know, I was, cause like the tax people were like, well, you actually need a business name for your LLC. And I'm like, I don't know. They're like, well, what do you do? I was like, I do 3D prints. And they're like, okay, let's go with that. And I'm like, well, just spell it like this, you know? And it's like that, like you said, that doesn't matter. Like you're not printing little like stickers for people to put on their car. It's like, it, who cares? Right. It's, it's to identify you as a brand, but am I that big right now that it matters? So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. I think it's easy to fall into, and I still do fall into like kind of the, the launch mode like launching my business, like I gotta have my entire car graphics wrapped, I gotta have swag. I still haven't bought, purchased myself one t-shirt that says Martinson Manufacturing. Uh, I don't have any swag, but it's yeah. it's kinda easy to fall into that trap. I gotta have like a launch and everything's gotta be perfect. But if you don't have, you know, if you don't have 100,000 subscribers on Instagram or YouTube, no one's gonna mm -hmm. care, no one's gonna see it. Yep. So it's like, just start quick and dirty and just mm -hmm. start, get something out there. And then you can always change that stuff later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I always joke with people uh, that I talk to. Um, they're like, oh, well, tell me about your business. I'm like, well, we do uh, three. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait, 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 we. I was like, it's just me, bro. Like, <laughs> it's just me in my basement. We ain't no like big, like corporation, you know? Right. So it's like brand guidelines is like, whatever, I, you know? I have t-shirts. I'm that guy, but at the same time, I was like, I need t-shirts, why don't I just print my logo on them? So, but but again, it's like, did I need to spend 200 bucks on shirts? It's like, that could have been in my pocket. That could have been paying off my house, you know? Sure. So. At the same time, it's fun just to kind of have that pride and ownership. Yeah. And I yeah, finally sure. bought myself a $100 big banner for my basement. And oh, cool. That's my big thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. Was there, was there anything that, just kind of, this is more just uh, more business, like starting a mm -hmm. small business. Or is there anything that maybe you didn't think about a lot or, yeah, didn't cross your mind or didn't give a lot of thought to, but now that you're in a business, you're like, this is a lot more important than I, I thought it would be. I, I think for me, I re I'm realizing that marketing is such a bigger beast than it is at first i'm like i'll just create a product throw it on etsy and i'll be good yeah. and i have had su some success with that but then if you don't have marketing no one's going to really see that product and so yeah how about how about for you yeah um well first first off uh and maybe you mentioned this earlier uh it, entrepreneurship is kind of like the best self-improvement avenue um so I think uh, something that I think would be really important is just like your own mental health. Like I started journaling on that guy now, like just to write my thoughts down um, and kind of like grow as a person, you know? Um, but yeah, marketing for sure is just like, I am the worst at it. And I even told my wife, I was like, listen, you need to like, take this over like you need to get on my instagram page like you need to take care of this because i am so bad at it um and i've had things where it's like i list an item on etsy and then that day i get three or four sales and i'm mm. like how does this happen and then i spend 200 bucks on advertising on one item and i get like three views and i'm like does this product suck or like am mm. i just you know and then all of a sudden I'm like a couple days go by and it sells and that's kind of where like i i'm afraid to like leave the Etsy ecosystem it's like they just raised their their fees but it's like yeah but their SEO and their advertising is amazing so it's like if you look for like acrylic letters or clear acrylic letters probably one of my listings is going to be one of the first on the top row on your mm -hmm. Google search and it's like that that's good but at the same time it's like I I need to market better and you know make YouTube videos or even just post on Instagram but yeah it's it's that's one of the things that I've overlooked. <clears throat> Gosh, marketing. It's like a curse word. <laughs> yeah. I, well, and I'm I like, this. do I need to go to, do I need to go to school for this? Right. Like, or do I just need to pay somebody else to do it? Cause 
I, I love like self-improvement. I wouldn't mind going to class or online class, but it's like six grand for a class or like 5,000 for this other dude in his basement that's got his marketing business going, you know? So it's like, right. what, you know? Oh, geez. I, I can't, I can relate to uh, having that conversation with your wife about Instagram. There's so many times where I'm like, Samantha, can you please just like create an Instagram account and yeah. post but then that's not her passion either. She doesn't enjoy yeah. it any more than I do. Yeah. And uh, and then times I'm like looking into try and find uh, some company that will do it for me. But then I'm coming across, you know, pretty substantial fees. And I'm like, I can't really justify that. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's that's I think I think that would be my answer too to that question. A, a thing I underestimated. I mean, I, I got lucky. The first YouTube video I ever created in my entire life got a hundred thousand views in the first year and now it's up to like 300,000 views. But anyways, I did a review video on the Glowforge and then I just plugged my product in there. Like, Hey, this is a good little mm -hmm. product to get. And then that video just became like the number one review video for Glowforge. And so I just lucked out. But since then, you know, first I'm like, Oh, that was easy. Like, and then yeah. I, I made my second video. I got like 200 views, like total. I'm like, oh, I just got lucky yeah. there. Um, but then yeah. since then, like the YouTube wave, I feel like I'm kind of falling off the YouTube wave. And now I'm trying to figure out how else, well, what else do I do to market? And mm -hmm. I think for, I think what I need to do for marketing since YouTube has worked is just to be diligent about um, making videos uh, at least one like product feature video a month just to kind of keep that regularly and i, I kind of battle with it because i never want to be that guy who's just hey here's my product come buy my product yeah. it's like i want to offer value to people but at the same time i kind of need to share products because that's my marketing yeah. um yeah and that's kind of hard too because it's like you don't want to be a slimy salesman but yeah. it's like this is kind of my thing and I don't know how if you've ever read like any books, but it's like most of the business books are like that uh, how to win friends and influence people. It's like you got to help them like and then they'll come, you know, so it's kind of it's kind of tough. But at the same time, it's like sometimes you need to just push your product and and have that advertisement. And it's like people are going to buy it or they're not, you know, it's up to them. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Um, boy, what about just kind of um, where are you kind of at with things um, right now? What's some kind of um, something that's on your mind a lot or goals? Is your goal right now just let me just try and get to full time as fast as possible or what's that? Yeah, um, lately and that's kind of like where the journaling comes in because every day like my phone will be like what's your daily goal like what's your personal goal what's your business goal what's your like family goal my business goal is 99 percent of the time get caught up you know okay. so um yeah if i could if i could get caught up which probably will never happen then i could like chase some other ideas that i have because i'm always like thinking of stuff um, when the kids go to bed, I can quick sketch something or create something in Fusion 360 and be like, okay, this is going to work. I need to produce this the next time I have a, a day off where I can, you know, get to manufacturing this. And th it generally happens maybe 60% of the time. Um, but yeah, that I, I kind of ha have been chasing more of like more winning products. Um, I know like my diorama kits are doing pretty well on like Instagram, um, I did pay for like an advertisement. So it's like people are reaching out to me. They're like, hey, can you make this like, but can you make it white or can you make it a little bit bigger or could you add like this door or something? So that's really cool. But it's like the sales aren't really reflecting that right now. Mm. But I know like this is going to be a good, a good idea because um, I've seen other people do it and they're just like, I can't, I we're, we're moving to a different direction. Um, just because there's more money over here or like, you know, our machines broke or something. So yeah, I'd say like probably just new products. I'm always trying to find something new just because, you know, cert I know I can't just put all my eggs in one basket and be like, okay, these muffler housings, I sell, you know, two per day, 
but eventually everybody's going to have one or like somebody <laughs> else is going to be like, Hey, I can make that, right. you know, I'm going to start selling this. I'm going to buy one and I'm going to get my calipers out and make it in fusion 360. And I'm going to print it out of ABS or something, you know? So it's like, what, what am I relying on? And it, is that a good space for me to be in? So my mind's just constantly working. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a, that's kind of a curse at the same time too. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned filament. So are most of your parts mm -hmm. printed in PETG 3D printed parts? Yeah. Or? And I, I actually just bought, it should be here today, actually. Um, I got another pallet of that coming because every time I have two different filaments, I'll grab the wrong one and then people will be like, Hey, this part's melting. And I'm like, yeah, I know hmm. I printed it on a PLA. And, and then I'll have to send them a new one. And like, sometimes I'll just give them a coupon for like something else too. Um, but yeah, I'll, it's mostly exclusively like black and white PETG. Okay. Yeah. And then as far as like the resin printers too, I use that ABS like gray print, uh, resin. That's all I use because again, it's like, if I have two different kinds and I don't know if it's regular resin or, or like the durable stuff, you know, it could cross and then my parts are breaking and people are mad. So right. those are the two that I kind of mm -hmm. have stuck to. Okay. Have you mm -hmm. found it, um, I guess, beneficial to, yeah. Do you just stick with one product now? Like just because for like to standardize and uh, make things easier for you and then to offer a same consistent product, do you try and just keep with the same uh, brand or same kind of filaments? Or do you still yeah. find whatever is cheapest at the time or? Um, I definitely kind of both. I, it's like if, if one of them's like half price or something or on sale, it's like, I'm going to buy that one. Um, that kind of burns you sometimes depending on like, it's like if you're seeing a roll of filament for six bucks, you know, it's probably not going to be great. So, you know, right. So it's like, you kind of get that like middle of the road one. Um, I know that if you buy wholesale, you do get a good, a good price. I think, I think, uh, my filament, the filament that I just bought came out to like 11 bucks per roll. Hmm. Um, but it's like, again, it's like, you kind of get what you pay for, but I found that that works really well for like the parts that I printing. So Okay. Yeah, I kind of just stick to one for the most part because if I if I you know if I buy like thirty or fifty rolls and it's trash, then I'm stuck with it. You know. Yeah, yeah. I've I'm really big on uh, kind of automating and standardizing, and I almost geek out over more over just kind of developing the workflow behind the product. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I've used. I started off with I think it was three D Solutech. It was PLA mm -hmm. and it just had a more of a nice matte finish and it just hid the layer lines really, really well. Yeah. Um, but then I would get batches where it was like um, kind of crumbly. It would just like snap. And then like halfway in between a print, it would mm -hmm. snap. Um, and I'm getting all these failed prints and it's, and it was a little cheaper. It was like three bucks cheaper than maybe the Overture brand. And after a while I've ordered hundreds of those rolls and after a while i'm like i'm just gonna spend the extra three bucks mm -hmm. to get a little nicer brand overture is what i use now one that's just consistent yep. every single time so i don't have to run into these hiccups and now fix a failed print and things like that have you tried the amazon basic brand i don't i think i bought I... one a long time ago but okay because I have like a theory, like that it's just the Overture brand. I think that they're all the same. I kind of. I don't know. I could theory. be wrong. Because I'm like, if you look at uh, like Alibaba or something, you can get that roll and like label it yourself. So I'm just like, I think it's uh, all the same. I because I printed with them, and like you said, like the matte finish on like some of the other brands is like that. You want that? Like gloss is just kind of meh. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's. It's crazy, but yeah, you definitely get what you pay for. Yeah, you do. And it's like, after a while, I'm like, all right, I'm done with the cheap stuff. I've returned 30, 50, so many rolls yeah. back to Amazon. And they then they finally put like some limit. They're like, you're returning too much. I got like an email. Yeah. <laughs> I got an email about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. 
How about, man, one thing I struggled with so much at the beginning was, and I think we're coming up in an hour, we'll try and keep it. Um, oh, sure. Uh, maybe close it off here pretty soon. But uh, creativity, I think, was really tough for me of balancing that. Of I love sitting down and trying to come up with new product ideas, but then you got to juggle just just the workflow, just production of I got to get my current parts out the door. I just got to mm -hmm. do the more businessy side of business. Um, and I always found it really challenging to kind of schedule time for myself to have like creative hour. Do you, do you schedule any kind of time during the day or during the week of like, here, this is just devoted to new product development mm. or anything like that? Or, um, yeah. And that's kind of one of those like bettering myself scenarios where it's like, I, I need to learn myself. I know that I'm most creative from like 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then it's like after that to noon is like production time. And then I know for a fact, like lunchtime hits and I'm just done for the day, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm just like hanging out with the kids. And then like in the afternoon, um, if my wife and the kids are doing something, I'll, I'll sit down really quick and, and do something on the computer or like look at my notes and stuff. Um, but yeah, there's definitely times where it's like, I, it's not necessarily in the calendar but it should be because you know when the day is done it should be done because you can you can definitely kind of over commit to your own business and then you're like I haven't spent time with my kids at all today you know like this is the whole reason that we're doing this business so yeah it's it's you gotta stay focused but at the same time like know what's important like if my if my wife's like, hey, you, we're gonna go for a walk, um, and it's like I'm so busy. It's like I'm going for a walk because this is the reason, you know. Like I'll just I'll stay up later if I need to. But yeah, it's uh, it's not scheduled, I'd say, but I definitely sit down at least an hour a day for for more of a creative, uh, hmm. like businessy side. Like I'll list some products and stuff. Okay. So that's good. Yeah, I struggled with that a lot because it started off being very creative mm -hmm. for me. And then it just turned into like a job, like a boring job. It's like, I got to wake up, turn the printer on, yeah, <clears throat> sand some parts, package them, drop them off. Yeah, I'm like, I want to do something creative. And so um, I go in waves. I, I had to schedule myself a little bit of time. I think like Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I'm like, I'm going to do more creative um stuff or just do something fun but then it's it's changed i need to kind of schedule something for myself again to be creative and chase new product ideas and things like that um yeah because yeah like you said it's like you're you don't really want to do that and i see that all the time on like instagram reels people will be like oh i got an order and then like the next scene is like them like oh i got an order like i gotta go package <laughs> this now i was like yes i get that like it you get 100 orders in a day or something and you're like i gotta work tomorrow but you know it's it's exciting when you come up with things and maybe that's why i like selling stl files because it's like you can you can make that you can be creative and then you don't have to make things but at the same time it's like your profit margin is gone now because you know, I don't know anybody that's paying hundred bucks for an STL file. Right. Right. So, yeah. Um, well, as we kind of oh, actually, actually, um, sorry, you gotta I, go? they're picking up my Glowforge right now. Oh, jump on yeah. that. Yeah. Truck. I saw two trucks coming and I'm like, ah, oh, they're supposed to pick that up today. Okay. But, pick, uh, pick up your broken yeah. Glowforge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, as we come to close, any, um, any tips or thoughts or advice to someone who's, I don't know, maybe just wanting to get started or someone who's already started a little bit or anything come to mind? Uh, yeah, maybe just like, don't give up on yourself. You know, if you thought that that was a good idea at one time, like it probably is, you know, don't be afraid to get feedback from people. Um, and yeah. But yeah, do some marketing. <laughs> oh yeah. gosh. Yeah. I, th I you know what um there's been days where it's like I don't feel like working um especially if it's like been raining for a couple of days and and it's and then I'm about to work. You know, and then uh my my family's home. But uh where is it going with that? 
my bad. Yeah, I don't know, just stay focused. Like, remember like that that's, that could be your income, but then remember why, why you wanted to do that. Um, yeah, I don't know about you, like, what do you, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think, I think you, <clears throat> you said a good line there about don't give up on yourself. It's, yeah. it's hard because when you, when you start your own business, there's no one else to blame for anything except for you. And you're really yeah. going to war against yourself. And as soon as you start your own business and especially just completely jump ship like I did, there is a whole world of insecurities and demons buried down below. You didn't know you had that all rise to the surface and start attacking you and saying, who do you think you are? You can't do this. You'll never make it. And, um, I don't have any solution to how to work through that except to just keep one foot in front of the others. And I had so much self-doubt, insecurity, and I'd come up with a product. I'm like, in order to do this full time and to make money, I got to sell this plastic part for 25 bucks. And I'm like, who the heck are you to sell a part for 25 bucks? Like, yeah. no one's going to buy it for 25 bucks. You should sell this for $5 and no one's going to buy it. And But yeah. So, but yeah, I think what you said, just, um, just keep moving forward. Don't well, give up on yourself. Yeah. And that too is like, don't sell yourself short too, because it's like, you put a lot of time and effort into that just because, you know, somebody else is selling like something for five bucks on, on eBay. It's like, that doesn't mean that that you're not worth that much. I mean, we think about all the time you put into design and like testing things. And it's like, you buy so many of those ac infinity fans to just test it out you know it's like that money has to come back somewhere you know you have overhead my electric bills like 300 bucks who's paying for that you know so right. it's like i don't know my my wife is always like well what if we you know did this and i'm like you you're not pricing in your your time like yeah it's cheaper to do this yourself but at the same time it's like just buy this thing like somebody else already put time into it you know, if it's something that I'm going to sell, I got to think about the design time, mm -hmm. print time. It's like, I'm not even going to go down there and turn the printer on for less than 20 bucks if there's a custom job, you know. It's like, what, you know, don't don't under undervalue yourself. Somebody's going to pay for that if it's a good product. Yeah. So Yeah, that's really good. Charge, charge what you're worth. Um, yeah. And I, I think that feeds into, again, of like, why are you having your own business? Um, mm -hmm. you want more time, but then don't stick yourself in the basement for 16 hours a day and never come up and yeah. see your family. And it's like, I want to have yeah. more financial freedom, but then don't, you know, charge 20 cents for an item that you spent 10 hours on. Like you got to make yeah. it work. Uh, do you have kind of real quick here? Do you have any type of, uh, philosophy or metric? How do you price your parts? Is it just, you value what your time is worth and kind of go from there? Or? Um, for the first long while i would just kind of throw numbers out there somebody i i did services um people would be like hey can you print this thing for me i made this cad model in school can you print it out and i'm like yeah that's so i'll load their file and then um just recently i was kind of i'm kind of a an idiot but in uh like cura and like that cheat box software it will have like a little section for like the price of the filament or like and mm. it'll say like the price at the bottom after you slice it you can put in what you want there like you don't have to put the actual price so it's like if your markup is 200 percent and the filament is 30 bucks and you put 60 bucks in there that's your price that you could charge but most of the time like for resin prints i i put like two grand for a bottle of resin and then it's like okay well that part's 25 bucks you know and it, when it's so that's kind of like, uh, I did like all these spreadsheets and stuff and that most of the time I'm just like, it's 30 bucks. Does that work for you? And they're like, yeah, that's hmm. good. I'll take two of them, you know? Okay. So, and then, uh, another thing too, for, for people out there, <laughs> if you don't want to do something and, uh, like if you don't want to do a print cause it will take too long and you're just like, it's going to be 800 bucks. Sometimes people will pay that 800 bucks. Mm. So don't be afraid to just be like, mm. yeah, I'll do that. And then you're like excited about it. You know, there's been times where it's just like, I've overpriced things because I didn't really feel like doing that. And then uh, all of a sudden they're like, yeah, I'll do that. I'll take two of those. And then you're mm. like, oh, wow, this is cool now. That's awesome. So <laughs> yeah, 
not everybody you got to think of outside yeah. your outside of your own budget because it's like yeah there's times where it's like people want to pay five dollars for a 3d print it's like i'm not gonna do that you know and then there's times where people are like they don't really understand or like they don't want to put in time with that and it's like yeah people make a wide variety of money like it's not everybody's not the same as you so right. yeah yeah that's so good to think about i i do that at the same time i'm making these custom window inserts and mm -hmm. someone ordered like a really custom one and i like to have it standardized and I'm yeah. like, that's just going to take a long time to make it all custom mm -hmm. and place everything. And and then so I kind of just jacked it up a little higher than normal. And I'm like, yeah, he's probably going to say no. And he's like, yeah, I think it was the same thing. It's like, yeah, I'll take two of them. I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, no, it all depends on who your audience. And yeah, I have no idea who's on the other side. Maybe that person's making $10 an hour. Maybe they're making $1,000 yeah. an hour and it's nothing to yeah, them. That's so crazy. who knows? Yeah. And I think that's kind of your responsibility too, to like kind of offer like, well, this is what I can do for you for like a hundred bucks. And then they're like, well, that's a little too much. And you can, you can go, come down on your price a little bit, or you can be like, well, this is what I can offer you. And then you can, you know, you can provide for that customer and fulfill their, their dreams or, or their product, depending on like what materials and stuff you use. So it's just like, if somebody says no to your price, that doesn't mean the sales over you can be like well what what is your budget and how can we fit the, what can i do for you for that much right so it's kind of like something you're always thinking about yeah that's good well cool man thanks so much for jumping on a call maybe we can wrap that up yes, for today sir. maybe we'll do uh yeah uh, another one in the future or something yeah um yeah for you guys watching go check out uh anthony's uh, he's got a youtube channel i love your uh your shop tour that's a cool video just yeah. to kind of see what his setup looks like. So you can go check out his channel, subscribe, follow on his journey. And then two, uh, check out his Etsy page and all the products that he offers. Um, you know, if you're a 3D printer person, you could probably make it yourself, but why not pay mm -hmm. a few bucks and help someone fulfill their dream of going full time yeah. on the small business. So uh, thanks yeah. so much for hanging out and uh, yeah. Uh, if you guys got any questions, comment below, uh, reach out to Anthony. I mean, I'll put his information, reach out to him, whatever. Yeah, cool. And I uh, wish you guys the best in your journey. And Anthony, thanks so much for uh, chatting and we'll, uh, we'll yeah. continue staying in Thank touch on, on our journeys. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Bye.